Sugar is one of the worst things for your health, yet it's hiding in almost all of the foods we regularly consume. In fact, the average American eats about 153 pounds, pounds of sugar every year, whether they know it or not. For reference, that's about the size of a baby giraffe. That's a lot of sugar. Sadly, our health is paying the price. But the good news is, there is something you can do about it. In just a moment, I'm going to get, share some of my best tips for kicking how severe. I'll also expose the other health enemy when it comes to sweeteners and what to use instead. So don't go away. With the information I'm about to share, you can truly have your cake and eat it too. All right, let's talk about the problem with sugar. Let's start with the basic. What is sugar? Well, sugar is a, we think of it as a carbohydrate. A sugar molecule, glucose is a sugar molecule. Lactose in milk is a sugar molecule. Fructose is a sugar molecule. But most of us, when we think of sugar, are actually talking about sucrose, table sugar. Sucrose is half glucose and half fructose. Now, many people now dread high fructose corn syrup. In fact, most high fructose corn syrup is about 45% glucose and 55% fructose. But plain old table sugar is 50-50 fructose and glucose. Now there's a lot of misconceptions about Oh, fructose is good. It doesn't work the same way glucose does. If you've read The Energy Paradox, or for that matter, if you've read any of my books, you know that fructose uh, may be actually more mischievous than glucose in terms of causing fatty liver, in terms of causing elevated cholesterol, and we'll get to that in a minute. But the point is, sugar is sugar is sugar. Now, most people have pretty much made the connection between sugar consumption, drinking sugary drinks, and obesity. But what most people still haven't figured out is the effect sugar has on your gut microbiome. The gut microbiome, part of it, loves sugar, but unfortunately it's actually the bad bacteria in your gut. And the bad bacteria in your gut, and certainly other fungal species like candida, thrive on sugar. On the other hand, the other good bacteria in your gut really don't do well with simple sugars. Instead, they like complex sugar molecules fiber, and that's bunches of sugar molecules all joined together that are very hard for us to break apart, but are very easy for these gut bacteria to ferment. Now, uh, candida, which I mentioned before, thrives in a sugar environment. And you actually produce sugar molecules that are more quickly absorbed than table sugar. In fact, most of you know that white bread has a glycemic index of 100, whereas sucrose, uh, table sugar, has a lower glycemic index than white bread. And when my patients tell me they don't eat sugar, but they're having bread, I reassure them that there are four teaspoons of sugar in each slice of bread. And so when you're having a sandwich, you're inadvertently having eight teaspoons of sugar, even though it's not appearing on the label. And we'll get to reading labels in just a second. 
Sugar also takes a huge toll on your immune system. And any sugar consumption, including drinking a glass of orange juice, suppresses your white blood cell function, their ability to eat bacteria and viruses, by 70% for up to six hours after you had that healthy orange juice with its vitamin C, or you had that piece of bread, or you had that pastry, all of which were tried in that experiment. So sugar is, you know, what a whammy. Now, don't even get me started on the effect of heart health. Over and over again, we're told about the dangers of saturated fats and of cholesterol. But in fact, most cholesterol is manufactured in our body. And most cholesterol, most elevated cholesterols in my practice, come from people's sugar consumption. Sugar is converted into the first form of fat, which is triglycerides. Triglycerides, in turn, are carried by cholesterol. So the more sugar you eat, the more triglycerides you make, and the more triglycerides you make, the higher your cholesterol goes. And there are many, many, many studies showing that it's your triglyceride level that has the biggest impact on you and your heart in terms of developing coronary artery disease. And they know that studies on rats, rats will choose sugar over both heroin and cocaine if they get the opportunity to press a, le a lever. And they will always go for the sugar hit instead of heroin and cocaine. And fruit is just another form of sugar that will spike your blood sugar. I guarantee it. Okay, so we got to get rid of sugar. But sugar is hiding everywhere. So you got to look at labels. And there are lots of sugar disguises. Things like brown rice syrup, glucose, fructose, agave. These are all other words for sugar. Now, there's an even more important trick for decoding food lab labels. As you remember, the food labels were manipulated to hide the sugar content. And this was done at the behest of big agriculture. And when I you know, sit down with my patients and we go through their meals and what they're eating, uh, we always find the source of the sugars they're eating. And many of them are apoplectic because it doesn't taste sweet. And they were looking at that sugar on the label, not total carbohydrates. And once we show them that, and once they change and get that out of their diet, not only does their triglycerides plummet, their insulin levels plummet, their prediabetes or diabetes goes away, and bonus, their cholesterol numbers plummet. And their good cholesterol goes up. It's win, win, win. Okay, let's talk about artificial sweeteners. Now, I realize that giving up that sweet taste is incredibly difficult. After all, we're wired to find a sweet taste. And sometimes it's impossible not to be able to satisfy a sweet tooth. So that's where sugar alternatives come in. And a key point of sticking to a diet that you can live with, literally and figuratively, is to getting the right sweeteners that aren't going to do you in. But what about natural sugars? Those must be better for me, right? No, unfortunately, natural sugars are the same. Whether it's orange juice, coconut sugar, organic sugar, sugar is sugar. Now, if you got to, you got to have honey, Try to have less or about a teaspoon a day. That's not much. 
and make it local or manuka honey. Uh, that'll be okay. Are there sweet alternatives that aren't going to kill you? Well, let's get to the good stuff. There are actually several quite safe sweeteners, and there's a really good one now that's gone to the top of my list. Two of the safest are allulose and monk fruit. Now, both of them offer you that sweet taste without spiking your blood sugar. And they do so while also feeding your gut buddies with prebiotics. In fact, allulose has now been granted a prebiotic fiber designation by the FDA. For those of you who don't know allulose, I've touted it in uh, The Energy Paradox, and it figures prominently in Unlocking the Keto Code, my next book, 